Hey Threadheads, Darren here. Welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. It's uh, been a little while since we've had a chance to do up a nice tutorial for you, but I thought uh, I've got a little bit of a break in some of my production, so I thought I'd tie up one of these flies. I'm starting to fill my box up for the spring. So this is a, uh, a hot collar gloss Pertagon. And this is something that you can vary up a little bit. I'm going to be tying up a few with like a hot orange collar, also some with more muted tones. I'm going to, I got some reds, and I think I'm going to try a few blues and perhaps even uh, purple in there. Pretty straightforward little nymph. I'll just show you a few tips and tricks on how to kind of get the body somewhat smooth. Don't forget to leave a comment down below and I'll get your name entered into the next draw that I do for some of the flies I tie on the channel as well as some other goodies. Let's have a look at the material list and get started. All right, so let's get started. We're going to need a new hook and a bead in the vise. So let's get the old one out. I'm going to be using some Partridge SUJ hooks, size 12, and a 3.5 millimeter. Uh, I'm going to be using a black nickel in this case, and I've uh, sprung for some slotted beads. So those will help kind of uh, help the fly turn over a little bit. So we've got a slotted bead on there. You just want to make sure you turn it so that... Uh, the bead's going to sit forward as much as possible. You can kind of see how it tips forward there. Take some black uh, 70D thread or dot thread. We're just going to start by tying in right behind the bead. We just want to kind of secure that. What I'd like to do is just take a few wraps and just kind of prompt up that bead. You can kind of see there it stopped uh, uh, bouncing around. So once we got that, we know kind of got it secured. If you want to, you can add a little bit of uh, head cement or some glue in there just to make sure it's really secure. We're just going to take touching turns down to our, the back of our body and then back up to the, just in behind the bead there. Take a little bit of Coq de Leon. This is a dark pardo. This is one of the whiting um, capes that I've got there measure out our tail probably could have scaled back a little bit but I don't mind the longer tails on these I know some folks prefer a fairly short tail so if that's you go ahead and shorten that up a little bit and we're going to just tie that down along the spine of the hook shank we just want to kind of pull those fibers up just a little bit as we wrap down just want to keep them seated right on top of the hook shank so that they're not going to be twisting around you don't want to go too far down the hook. You don't want to go into the bend because those uh, fibers are going to twist around. We're going to add some fine copper wire or some small copper wire here. And uh, I'm just going to tie that along the side of the shank. You can kind of stick the tag end of that inside the relief of the slot in the bead. And we'll just tie that in along the side there. Just want to, again, try and keep touching wraps as much as possible. We want to try and keep the body smooth as much as we can. So now that we've got our wire, our tail, we just want to kind of start building the body. So I want to build in a little bit of a taper into the fly. So I start by going back all the way and uh, down to where my tie-in was and then I'll wrap touching turns as much as possible and back to the bead and then back towards the tail. I won't go quite all the way and I'll then I'll come back up to the bead. I'll keep doing that until I've got a bit of a taper and then usually once I've got that all tapered I'll take some extra wraps if I need to anywhere just to kind of smooth out any uh, bumps that we've got in there. This one doesn't look too bad. You can, you can see we've got a nice little teardrop taper. So we're going to take our wire and we're going to twist it up as a ribbing. And I like to go opposite direction of how I tied in my thread. 
And we'll just put four or five ribs in there. We'll tie that off right behind the bead. And we'll give that a few wraps. Make sure you go on both sides of that thread so that it gets locked in place. We'll pull that tight. Add another wrap in here. Pull it tight. And give it a couple wiggles to helicopter it off. You get a nice clean break that way. And we're going to use some pink thread here. We don't have to tie off for black. And again, we're going to be using the 70D or 8 out thread. We'll just start in right behind the bead. And then we're going to basically tie off the black thread with our pink here. You just want to make sure that you've got your black thread locked in. So cross it over. And uh, it can be a little bit tricky there just to dealing with two bobbins at once. But I know you guys can do it. We'll just kind of pull the black thread kind of up towards the bead. And then you can either snap it off or you can cut it off. Probably should have cut that one off. I got a little bit uh, fiber sticking out at the bottom there. But I'll just pull those forward and I'll wrap over them. And we should be okay. So we'll just continue wrapping up our collar. You want to kind of make sure that it doesn't get too big. You want to kind of keep it in line with uh, the shape of the body. We'll add a whip finish. And when you're doing your whip finish, you can also um, make sure that you kind of help that body shape as well. You can take a little bit of bone dry and our UV torch. We're just going to coat the body of this. We just want to be careful that we don't get that into the tail. We want to make sure that we've got a nice even coat from the uh, back of the body right up into the collar. That's going to help bring out the colors a little bit also. And you just want to make sure you don't get any on the tail. But if you do, by accident, I usually just give that a give the tail a little bit of a pinch and put it in the position I want it to cure in, just in case it did get any uh, of the UV resin on there. We'll give that a nice long cure. This one's ready for the box. Hope you enjoyed that. Hopefully we get some more videos up in the next little while. Try a few of these. And if you... Uh, tie a few up. Make sure to tag me on Instagram or on your socials. Hey Fly Tires, thanks for stopping by and checking out my fly tying videos. If you enjoyed the video and want to show your support, hit the thumbs up and share it to your social networks. I hope you consider subscribing to the channel and if you do, be sure to hit the bell icon to get notifications on my latest fly patterns, tips and reviews. If you have a question or comment, leave a message below. You'll also be entered into the next draw for some of the flies I tie and a few stickers. Until next time, this is Darren saying, keep a hook in your vice. Cheers.